Workers' unions and indigenous movements in Ecuador hold a protest in rejection of the increase in fuel prices announced by President Lasso. The UN General Assembly holds a high-level meeting on delivering climate action for people, for planet, and for prosperity. The transitional government of Sudan rejected the president's unilateral decision of dissolving the institution and reaffirms that it is still the legitimate power of the African nation. Hello, from the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is From the Talks. I'm Ray Gomez. We'll begin with the news. The Unitary Front of Workers of Ecuador, together with indigenous movements, led this Tuesday a new protest in rejection of the increase in fuel prices announced by President Guillermo Lasso amid a torn climate in the country's uh, in the country because of economic problems, uh, political tensions, and a rise in insecurity. The leader of the Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities of Ecuador, CONAIA, as well as the peasant sector and black communities, joined to demand solutions based on the problems of the Ecuadorian people. The national protest has a common front, which is the demand for the reduction of fuel prices. However, each organization has particular demands. In Quito, the march will concentrate after 4 p.m. local time and will go to the historical center of the capital to make their demands heard to the executive. According to the latest reports, the police is violently repressing demonstrators and also journalists who were reporting from the strike site. The Center for Economic and Policy Research in Bolivia determined that the Organization of American States, led by its Secretary General Luis Almagro, not only issued an inaccurate report on the alleged fraud in the 2019 elections, but also withheld relevant information and pressured the researchers that had demonstrated flaws in the report. As confirmed by Jay Johnston, one of the researchers in the charge of the center, who stated that the statistical data from the unofficial count of the trap and the figures of the final report on the elections coincided in a 99 percent. Therefore, the data Luis Magri used to promote a coup that caused the many lives were confirmed almost completely by the final computation of the tally sheets. The Secretary General of the OAS was never able to substantiate with figures and verifiable data his accusation of electoral fraud, which was later used by violent extremist sectors to stage a coup and undertake a first hunt against politicians, union leaders, and indigenous peoples. Due as a researcher also pointed out, they were pressured to stop their work. The International Organization for Migration, as part of the United Nations systems and uh, with a permanent presence in Tapachula, Mexico, closely followed the mobilization to the north of thousands of people seeking a response to their asylum request in Mexico or the United States. According to Alberto Cabezas, uh, the organization communication coordinator in Tapachula, People who made this journey are doing so to know what options that they might have once in Mexico City. The official said that members of the organization traveled with a caravan following them and addressing their needs as they are worried about the vulnerability of people who pass through unknown areas on their way to the U.S. For his part, Stefan Dujarica, spokesperson for the U.S. Secretary General, in response to the Voice of America, called for countries in the region to respond to the root causes of migration. While thousands of migrants are worked towards uh, the Mexican capital, the U.S. ambassador in that country reminded asylum seekers uh, that his country's law clearly restricts uh, land travel across the U.S.-Mexico's uh, border. Ken Salazar, U.S. representative in Mexico, asked uh, to thousands of uh, disparate families who worked for hours and under the most difficult conditions to stop crossing the border into the United States. Despite recognizing the pandemic has had a devastating impact in the lives of millions of people, the diplomat reiterated that the law clearly states people cannot enter illegally.
The official recently visited uh, several Mexican states after receiving a letter from U.S. congressmen and senators raising concerns among energy uh, entrepreneurs uh, about the recent actions taken by the administration of President Andrés Manuel López Obrador. On Monday, President Daniel Ortega stressed the importance of respecting sovereignty at an event with the presence of representatives of the Russian government. He also recalled that this respect is a principle supported by the United Nations organizations. He made this statement public during an event to deliver to 150 public buses in Managua, the capital of the country. The president recalled that only when his country reached full sovereignty were they able to establish a relationship with the Soviet Union. Opposite to the case of the United States, the Soviet Union offered them cooperation and solidarity, especially during the 80s. In recent months, Washington has reinforced sanctions and the negative rhetoric against the government of Nicaragua. They have also intervened in the matters of internal policy, especially related to electoral processes in the Central American country. Sovereignty, a principle ratified by the United Nations and has been signed by all countries of the organization. If that principle was respected, there will be peace in the world. There will also be better conditions to fight poverty, diseases, and pandemics, and to also improve the living conditions of the peoples in the world. The first day of strike called to protest against fuel shortages and violence of the armed gangs in Haiti, a situation that has put the lives of mothers and newborns at risk, especially in hospitals in the capital. While the stores were closed, thousands of citizens stayed at home, living the streets in a silence uh, rarely seen before in the capital. The only events recorded, which have been unrelated to the strikes, uh, were isolated shootings coming from the barricades in the sector of Delmas uh, II, where gains clash daily. In the midst of the crisis caused by the lack of fuel, the United Nations Children's Fund made uh, an alert call because uh, mothers and neighbors, uh, newborns uh, face a health risk in the hospitals uh, due to the lack of fuel. It's necessary to keep the electrical systems of the facilities working. According to local media, 300 children, 45 women in maternity, and another 70 adults, including the patients of COVID-19, are in danger since two important hospitals in the Haitian capital would stop providing attention in 72 hours if they do not receive the fuel immediately. In Cuba's agricultural system currently develops 15 projects under foreign funding in line with the importance of this sector for food security and the economy of the Caribbean country. The director of projects and business consulting, as well as the engineering company of the Ministry of Agriculture, Leonides Morales, informed that these programs together represent an amount of more than $150 million, with other proposals in the negotiation stage. Of the 15 projects under execution, some are established and operating and others are at an advanced stage of a negotiation and approval. Therefore, they are very close to being established. The project's enterprise, uh, with an active participation in most of these plans, enables uh, their management at all stages, making them more sustainable and attractive. We'll be right back after this very short break. Welcome back. The UN General Assembly holds a high-level meeting on delivering climate action for people, for planet, and for prosperity. The meeting focuses on the gap between current and required technical financial 
capacities to achieve the 1.5 degrees target and how that gap can be met through showcasing best practices that simultaneously address climate action and mirror structural challenges exacerbated by the pandemic. Climate change is considered the greatest challenge of our time, a cascade multidimensional threat multiplier. The most recent IPCC report confirms that the climate change is now rapid intensifying and widespread. It is the first children's climate risk index estimates that roughly 1 billion children live in countries extremely vulnerable to climate change's impacts. With only a few weeks uh, remaining until COP26, the world is in a race uh, to a secure consensus to keep the 1.5 degree goal within reach. For the kind of challenge that brings us together today. The climate crisis is a cold... In this context, uh, the Foreign Affairs Ministers of Maldives and President of the UNGA 76 Session, Abdullah Sahid, referred uh, to the latest results uh, in the organization's attempts to promote uh, the achievement of global climate goals. Support has reached a feverish pitch with broad knock-on effects for climate action. And this support will only continue to rise. My friends, I am hopeful that we can deliver this. We have the science, we have the capacity, we have the resources. Let us work together. I believe we can and we should find the will to end the climate crisis. Today's event will not solve climate change. Only action will. Today's event is about reminding people of what we are capable of if we act in concert, trust in science, and intelligently mobilize the many resources we have at our disposal. Secretary General of the UN General Assembly, Antonio Guterres, uh, warned about the urgency of the joint and efforts in the global fight to reduce the humanity's impact on climate change. This is a cold red for humanity. And this assembly and governments around the world face a moment of truth. In six days, world leaders will be put to the test at COP26 in Glasgow. Their actions or inactions will show their seriousness about addressing this planetary emergency. And the warning signs are hard to miss. Pollution kills nine million people every year. Every day, dozens of species go extinct. Scorching temperatures are turning farmlands into parched landscapes. The United Nations Security Council met in TSA to discuss the situation in Sudan after the coup in that African country. The session transpires at the request of the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Estonia, Ireland and Norway. The representatives from 15 states that take part in the Security Council debate in a closed doors meeting after a delegation returned from a joint visit to the Sahel region in Sudan. On Monday, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres condemned the coup in the Eastern African nation and warned that the situation endangers the political transition and stability of the country. The Sultan of Brunei, Hassan al Bolkiah, presiding the Association of the Southeastern Asian Nations, began the Asian new Annual Summit on Tuesday. Myanmar is absent from the event as the leader of the military government of that country, Min Al Hyana, was banned from attending. One of the issues on the table of this ASEAN summit is the military government in Myanmar and the risk it poses to regional stability as the current coup empowered the government that took over in February 2021 threatens the safety of the civilian opposition. The head of the military junta, General Aukhilian, was banned from ASEAN due to his negative regarding a request from ASEAN to send an envoy to meet with the ousted and judicially prosecuted civilian leader on after which the junta appointed the senior official from the foreign ministry, but uh, eventually withdrew attendance. So the town of Brunei at this ASEAN summit reflected on the region's path toward prosperity on a more positive note. Has greatly expanded, especially as we collectively. I look forward to hearing colleagues' views, which will guide us in identifying measures towards 
Realizing the ASEAN Community Vision 2025. Thank you. This year, we have made significant progress in strengthening our cooperation with external partners. Our work with them has greatly expanded, especially as we collectively address COVID-19 and prepare our community for the future. And high officials from China and the United States have expressed that this Tuesday the need to maintain communications to settle on a dispute in areas of economy and trade and to avoid conflicts like that in 2018. Vice Premier Liu Xie and the American Secretary of Treasury, Janet Yellen, agreed to maintain cooperative communications during a video conference this month. The official statement reported a pragmatic dialogue on both sides and focused on macroeconomic situation, as well as bilateral and multilateral cooperation. Yet, he expressed concern over additional taxation and sanctions passed by Washington by claiming a fair treatment to domestic enterprises. Furthermore, before year's end, a summit is expected between Presidents Xi Jinping and Joe Biden. Uzbekistan's president, Afrak Mirziyoyev, won the elections and enters his second term as head of the Central Asian country. Central Election Commission announced on Monday that Mirziyoyev received 80.1 percent of the votes counted. The first president has succeeded leader Islam Karimov in 2016 upon his death. The very low-level campaign was characterized by little promotion of the candidates, despite this, uh, the turnout on election day reached 80.8 percent .8 of the electoral role. Representatives of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe and the European Parliament participated in a joint observation mission. Russian President Vladimir Putin was the first president to congratulate Mirziyev on his re-election. We have more stories coming up after this financial break. Welcome back. The transitional government of Sudan rejected on Monday the unilateral decision of the president of dissolving that institution and reaffirms that it is still the legitimate power of the African nation. In a communique of the Ministry of Information, the transitional government led by Abdallah Hamdak opposed the acts of Abdel Fattah al-Burham, president of the Sovereign Transitional Council, after he dissolved that uh, executive body. Hamdaga, along with several of his cabinet ministers, is uh, being held hostage by military forces since last Monday. He is uh, whereabouts still unknown. The communique published by his supporters insists in the legal or illegal character of the actions carried out in the recent hours as they represent a crime against the nation. The transitional authorities were confirmed after an agreement between the previous military rule, which took power in the 2019 coup, and several opposing political forces. The government had set in nation a series of economic and social reforms and had reached a peace agreement with important rebel groups in Darfur and other areas of the nation. Repression from the interim military government against the mass popular protests in Sudan left three people dead and already injured in the first day of the coup. The de facto government is uh, later that bullets said to put down some of a protest uh, spontaneously devised to seek the reestablishment of democracy in the northeastern African country. According to medical sources, at least uh, three people lost their lives and 80 were injured uh, during the first day of demonstrations. Manhua General Abdel Fattah al Burhan, who took the power as uh, the head of the interim government, appeared uh, in a press conference earlier in which uh, he dissolved the civil government and proclaimed the state of exception for Sudan. Sudan's current situation is awful, but we will not accept any military coup in this country. That's enough. 30 years of al-Bashir's humiliation. We don't want another coup now. We want an elected civilian government. These people who turn on the government want to be presented with their innocent blood. The humiliation that we are already living is enough. 
Women activists in Kabul on Tuesday protested over the international community's inaction on the crisis in Afghanistan. Around a dozen women raised the wrath of the Taliban who have been demonstrations and shut them down using violence since uh, taking power in August, holding banners uh, affirming their right to education and right to work before the Islamists stopped the press uh, from approaching the march. Women asked the United Nations Secretary General to support uh, their right to education, to work, since uh, they arrived the deprived, I meant, of those rights. Their demonstration addressing the political, social, and economic situation in Afghanistan was initially planned to take place near the UN mission in Afghanistan. Symbolic demonstrations by women have become a regular occurrence in recent weeks, as Taliban have still not allowed them to return to work or permitted most girls to go to school. Today we are doing this protest because we want our rights. Why is the world currently silent? Why is the, U the UN not giving their attention to women? Every day the poor are shouting, our children are dying. Men are shouting because of unemployment. They don't have a job. They are committing suicide. Why is the world silent? Why is not all listening to our voice? Why should we be in prison at home? How long do we have to be in prison? Why is no one listening to us? Don't women have the right to be active in society? Child marriage has been practiced in Afghanistan for centuries, uh, but where in climate change or related poverty have uh, driven many families to resort uh, to striking deals earlier and earlier in girls' lives. The World Food Program warned uh, that more than half the population of Afghanistan will face a kid from insecurity from November. The situation and insecurity after the Taliban took back control of the country had prompted village and displaced people to sell their daughters into marriage. Displaced camp leaders said the numbers of young girls getting betrothed started to rise during 2018 for men and search this year when the rains fell once more. These leaders do what they can to save their neighbors from having to make the awful choice distributing a small ration of bread to the poorest families whenever possible. We've come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at Telesur English. You can also follow us on social media for uh, the latest news. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm Ray Gomez. I thank you for watching.